Jansson och det är jag som ska lotsa er igenom veckans NHL Power Week. Theo Fleury berättar om flytten till Peter Forsbergs Colorado. Jag har respekt från de andra teamen och det är en anledning till att jag kan göra de saker som jag kan göra ut där. Veckans internationella NHL-profil är Toronto och Sergej Beresi. Och naturligtvis summerar vi kampen om Stanley Cup. Låt oss börja med kampen mellan Phoenix och St. Louis. Det krävdes sju matcher för att skilja lagen åt och det var målvakterna som stod i fokus. Starkt av St. Louis Blues vars nästa uppgift blev om möjligt än tuffare. I den ena West Conference semifinaler väntar ett utvilat och mycket väl förberett dans. Och den som trodde att Brett Hall skulle hålla igen mot sina forna lagkamrater i St. Louis trodde fel. Hull var full av kampvilja. Dallas målvakt Ed Balfour tog samtliga 23 skott som avlossades mot honom. 3-0 till Dallas i match nummer ett. I match nummer två fick St. Louis äntligen hål på Balfour. Ledning 4-3 inför tredje perioden men Dallas skulle återställa ordningen. Dallas Joe Newendijk missade möjligheten att avgöra i tredje men tog revansch på övertid. San Jose utmanade Peter Forsbergs Colorado. Här bilder från match 6 i vilken San Jose jagade ledningsmål. Jeff Friesen gjorde misstaget att jubla för tidigt. Från sin plats i utvisningsbåset fick han se Colorado i effektivt 5-4-spel. Friesen in på isen igen, men San Jose åkte ut. This is a fierce rivalry, even though these two teams are playing for only third time in the playoff history against one another. This heated rivalry renews itself here tonight. Colorado mot Detroit i West Conference andra semifinal. Steve Eiserman, Theo Fleury, matchens första målskyttare. Shot by Fox. Detroit nere för räkning när vändningen kom. Koslov kvitterade och tvingade fram en förlängning. I match nummer två fortsatte Detroit sandstorm mot Patrick Roa. Swept right to Lipstrom, cranks a shot, he scores! It may be off Holmes from in front, but the Red Wings have gotten a power play goal and lead three to nothing. Thrown 
to the front. Lindstrom fires. Score! This time it was Wendell Clark in front of Patrick Waugh. It's hard to stop it when you don't see it. Detroit is just getting it done. Boas kollega Bill Ranford var betydligt mer lyckosam. 28 skott, 28 räddningar och 4-0 till Detroit. First playoff shutout since 1992. Only his sixth game in the last seven years of playoff competition. Så till det tidigare utlovade mötet med Theo Fleury, Calgarys främste målgörare genom tiderna. Så här såg det ut dagen då han tvingades lämna klubben. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss it here. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> The trade day when it finally happened, how difficult was that, but how emotionally uplifting was that to know you're coming to Colorado where you had a chance to win it? It was, uh, it was a tough day, very emotionally draining day, and then, uh, you know, get on the plane the exact same day, come to Colorado. It was, uh, you know, it was a whirlwind couple of days, but, uh, you know, by getting me, it just shows you the commitment that this organization has to, to winning the cup. Joe Sackick. Meet you at the airport. Not only is that odd for a captain to meet a new player, it's also the airport's a long way away. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he went out of his way to find you. Yeah. You know, we battled uh, when we were kids, you know, in junior and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where the friendship started. And then, you know, the different All Star games, Canada Cups and, and whatnot. After Pierre Lacroix called me, Joe phoned me uh, in Calgary, and he was, you know, we were really excited. And, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to have, you know, to play with a centerman like that. Theo Fleury as a young kid, the passion of hockey. You get drafted finally, eighth round. They never planned on you playing in the NHL. How'd you take that? Well, to be honest with you, I took it in a positive way. Uh, and the way I did it positively was, I'm gonna prove everybody wrong. I'm gonna shove it, you know, way up their rear ends and, you know, show them that I can play this game. He's outmatched in size, but size doesn't matter if you have a big heart. You know, went to the minors and, and uh, you know, had a, had a great half season and I got called up to Calgary and, uh, and it was kind of probably the last ingredient that uh, you know the team needed to you know to win the cup. It's something you dream about since you've been this high. But I've always been this high, so you know. A guy who just retired named Wayne Gretzky. You played in Calgary. He was in Edmonton. You both at different times of your careers were part of that rivalry. What was it like? Oh, it was war. It was like the toughest roughest series that I've ever played in. Now you're here, Colorado and Detroit. Oh, I think it's a, it's a lot similar in a lot of ways that, uh, you know, from the Chris Draper incident to the, uh, you know, Patrick Waugh fighting Mike Vernon, you know, that comes from right from the heart. And, uh, you know, when guys talk about Detroit, they, you know, they really talk about uh, you know how badly they would love to to meet them and play them again, and and, uh, um, and it's it's a lot similar, and it's going to be it'll be war. You won at every single level up to a Stanley Cup. Is there anything missing? Another one. Hopefully here. Hopefully this year. When you get to this level, uh, the only reason why you lace the skates up every day is to get that opportunity to win a Stanley Cup and. And, uh, you know, I know that it's right here and it's within grasp and, and we have the team to do it. So when it's all said and done, you take your skates off for the last time, you want people to think of you as a winner. And obviously, the more Stanley Cups you have, you know, the better chance you have of people calling you that. Den 26 juni inleds NHL-draften i Fleet Center i Boston. Enligt förhandstipsen kommer sju av de tio första valen från europeiska ligor. 18-årige Patrick Steffen rankas som Nordamerikas nummer ett. 35 poäng på 33 matcher för Long Beach Ice Dogs i IHL. Pavel Brendel spelar för Calgary Hitmen i juniorligan WHL. Han rankas som nummer två. I feel pretty good and excited, but I, I just play season and I'm doing pretty good now. Jamie Lundmark representerar Moose Jam Warriors i VHL. Rankas trea efter 40 mål och 51 assist den här säsongen. You know, it's been working for me that I'm just going out and uh, playing my game every night and trying to be as, as solid as I can. Men ingen av dessa tre tros bli dräftad före tvillingarna Sedin eller finländaren Jani Rita. Den 26 juni vet vi med säkerhet. På skadefronten kan vi meddela följande. Chris Osgood och Stefan Hjell tvingas stå över på grund av knäskador. 
this sure doesn't look very good because he was being helped off. Nu till den sjunde uppgörelsen mellan Pittsburgh och New Jersey. A look live at Sudden Death Tuesday. The Meadowlands or the Swamp. Take your pick. That rink has two nicknames and they're both perfect for Game 7. All the pressure is squarely on the top-seeded Devils. It seems like the Pittsburgh Penguins are coming in here. They're going to have a whole lot of fun. And there is pressure on the home team. It's a one-game series and uh, whichever team wants it more, I think, is going to win it. Inga mål i första perioden, men vi behövde inte vänta länge i period nummer två. Bowling back in left side, great pass, Kovalev, he shoots and scores! But you know, Yager has become such a champion, here he is again, moves in, gets it to Herdina, he shoots and scores! Jan Herdina! This is huge, absolutely huge, going to the locker room with a 3-1 lead, and only 20 minutes left for the Devils to bounce back. Dave Andrzejczak of New Jersey hopp i tredje perioden. Bara hopp ni hit ner för Martin Straka avgjorde. Pittsburgh vidare. Shot stop, rebound, score! It's Martin Straka, and with five and a half to go, oh! Penguins lead four to two. What a reaction from Straka, sliding along the ice. Oh man, two on zero break from the blue line in, and the fans are headed for the exits. Celebrations already on because the Pittsburgh Penguins have planted the top seed in the East. the Stanley Cup playoffs, we now have it, and they're in black and celebrating. They are the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's a big win for us, and, uh, you know, we need uh, we need this win, and, uh, you know, they, they were used to the years when Mario was here, and they were used to win all the time, and now he let and we couldn't make a second round for five, six years, so this is big, big win for us. Toronto slog ut Philadelphia och gick vidare till semifinal i Eastern Conference mot just Pittsburgh. Toronto hade full koll på Jager och Straka, men glömde bort Dan Kessa. Pittsburgh bringing in. It's center to strike and a chance, score! Kessa. He drifted that one by Joseph. Toronto hämtade sig aldrig efter Kesas 1-0. Pittsburghs målvakt Tom Barrasso stoppade allt och i ett sista försök i spel 6 mot 5. Mål i öppen bu 2-0 till Pittsburgh. Förlusten till trots så sprudlade Torontos anhängare av optimism. Coachen Pat Quinn var emellertid bekymrad över anfallsspelet och Lonnie Bohonus plockade sin lag. Bohonus visade vägen för betydligt mer rutinerade och respekterade spelare som Mats Sundin till exempel. Alla trodde på ny Boston seger i match nummer två, men Buffalo hade tagit lärdom av förlusten. Here's Brown number 37, checked by Axelson. Puck put out in front, Pekka with a shot, he scores! Mål från Pekka i första perioden, Curtis Brown i den andra och Dixon Ward säkrade Buffalos utgärd. Dixon Ward looking at an empty net, he scores! Veckans tränarprofil är Toronto Maple Leafs, Pat Quinn. Here at the brand new Air Canada Center with Coach Pat Quinn. Pat, you grew up just a stone's throw from here in Hamilton. I imagine growing up you 
for a leaf fan, followed the leaves, and little boy dreaming of maybe one day playing for the leaves, which you did. In all of your hockey fantasies when you were a kid, did you ever once imagine yourself as coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs? No, not at all. You're right. I, Hamilton, right down the road, uh, I had uh, to sneak a, a little set to listen to Saturday Night Foster Hewitt broadcast, and uh, some of my favorite players, especially Ted Kennedy, he was my favorite. But to uh, have a chance to coach uh, in the National Hockey League and uh, for Toronto, it was just a thrill that I had never anticipated, never thought about. In fact, last year when I was let go with Vancouver, I thought I'd had enough until I uh, got this chance to do this, and I said, boy, I can't turn that down. At what point did you say to yourself, you know what, I'm a player in the National Hockey League, but someday I'd really like to coach? Well, I really didn't plan on coaching uh, at all. I had not thought about it. I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, what might give me the thrills that I had as a player when I finished. And Barry Ashby had just passed away in Philadelphia, and they were looking for a coach and mentioned to me that time whether or not I might be interested. I didn't have anything to do, so I took the job, and once I took it, I got hooked. You had a very successful tenure with the Flyers. When you were finished with your career in Philadelphia, you took some time off and went back to, to law school. Why? <laughs> I think uh, just probably my preparation for my parents, they always said, don't ever knock off the school until uh, you're sure you got something going. We, you know, in my day, we didn't earn enough. Uh, today's players can retire after their playing days are done, uh, economically speaking anyway. I don't know why they would otherwise, but uh, we couldn't. We didn't make that kind of dough. So I uh, had always planned that I needed to have something else to do. And, and more importantly, was something to do with my life, you know. And, uh, and so law school was uh, something that I put off to try coaching and it just made sense for me to go back then. Well, in Vancouver, you were both GM and president. What was that role like for you as president of the National Hockey League team? Uh, when I was in Los Angeles coaching, I thought, boy, it's time for me to try something different in the game. And I had this opportunity come up, and it was, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to, to be in charge of it all, so to speak. You know, and I had a chance to learn a lot about the business overall, and it was enjoyable. But I always miss that coaching part. You know, when you're upstairs, you're that far more removed from the players and from what happens on the ice. And, and really, what happens on the ice dictates everything. You have accomplished so very much in your life. And you've, you've added really the opportunity to do a lot of different things. Player, coach, GM, president of a team. And looking back at your life, how would you sum it all up? Lucky. <laughs> I've always been lucky. At every corner where it looked like maybe I wasn't going to be able to stay in the game, there was some other opportunity come up, and uh, I feel real fortunate, I've, and uh, a lot of good things have happened, and any of the bad stuff you can push aside real fast. Sergej Beretsin har lyckats bra under Pat Quinns ledning i Toronto. Ryssen gör sin tredje säsong i NHL och efter grundspelet toppade han lagets interna skytteliga med 37 mål. Now Beretsin races after with a steal from Kravchuk, puts the brakes on to Alude. Still has it, working in with a shot, score! Holy Mackinac! What a play! Sergej Beretsin! Sergej Beretsin goes coast to coast. Rebound to Beretsin, backhand scores! Sergej! Beresin noterade sitt första hattrick i februari och behövde inte vänta länge på sitt andra. Pat Quinn menar att han har funnit länken som tidigare saknats. Sergey Berezin has given us that little element. Uh, he's uh, adjusted. To, we all think he's just an offensive player, but he's he's uh, positioning has really improved. Plus, he's he's one of those guys that's scary out there. When he gets the puck, he can back you off. Ingen visste hur Berezin skulle påverkas av att spela med ett specialskydd efter att ha fått checken avslagen. Men Berezin, han påverkades inte alls. Over. 
En bra målvakt är kanske det viktigaste av allt i slutspelet. Här är de som stoppat och långt ifrån stoppat. I've got nothing to prove to anybody. What I've got to prove is to myself. I nästa veckas program tar vi en titt på kandidaterna till säsongens finaste utlämningar. Armour Yager will be among the top vote-getters for MVP in the National Hockey League. Vi gör också en nostalgitripp om minst det bästa från förr. Most fans agree, this is the finest hockey team ever assembled. Sändningen från veckans NHL presenterades av McDonalds.